Sending more 3,000 extra foreign troops to South Sudan has been a much-considered option for the AU, United Nations and the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD. As a regional response to the volatile situation in the world's newest but troubled nation, after the IGAD summit that sat over the weekend in Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa to discuss the recent fighting that broke out in South Sudan, the media reports that suggested President Salva Kiel had finally accepted more foreign troops into the country. But South Sudanese ambassador to Uganda Samuel Luate Lomintsuk says this is not anywhere closer to the truth because it was not agreed upon. The sovereignty of another country cannot easily be violated by another country or another nation within the international norm. The South Sudan do not need intervention force because this is a sovereign country. And if there is anything that has to do you know, with the protection or with the safety of our people, it has been done by our own people. In an exclusive interview with WBS TV, Lamin Suk says the summit forwarded three issues of contention, including the protection of military corridors and humanitarian personnel. And so we're saying that uh, what was agreed was purely for protection of the humanitarian assistance, protection of the, uh, the, the, the leadership of JEMEC in South Sudan, and the protection of uh, UNIMIS camps. The ambassador further adds that after agreeing on the three aspects, IGAT will then send a team to Juba to draft illegalities under which the protection force will be carrying out its activities while in South Sudan. IGAT is now to go to Juba and to sit down with the government of the Republic of South Sudan to now work out the modalities. One of it is where are these forces going to come from? The protection forces going to come from where? Are they going to be drawn from the UNIMIS, for the UNIMIS forces that are already in Juba? Or are they going to come from other contributing African countries? And which countries are these that South Sudan will say yes on that scenario? On the 25th of July this year, South Sudanese President Salva Kiel sacked Machal as first vice president, repressing him with General Taban Dengai. The move threatens to split the armed opposition into two factions, one backing Guy in Juba to support implementation of the peace implementation and another faction that only recognizes Machal as the first vice president according to the peace accord signed in August 2015. Meanwhile, Lomsuk has confirmed the death of Gatwang Machal, son to former first vice president Dr. Riek Machal, who was killed during last month's fighting at the presidential palace, but was quick to note that it was not intentional since it was a fire exchange. They informed that uh, the son of Dr. Riek Machal, of course, died in Yuba. The issue is, this is not an intention, intentional kind of issue that son of Dr. Riek Machal was killed in Yuba by... Uh, government forces intentionally. Riyakmasar forces invaded presidential palace unceremoniously. And of course, in the events of any fighting, anybody can be killed. Even myself, if I'm to be there in a crossfire, I don't know whether I could be killed or I couldn't. You see, that's the scenario here. So it is not about an individual person. It is those who went and attacked the presidential palace Yes, both sides from the government and the I.O. and innocent uh, 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 people that are not even the military, they also died there. South Sudan gained independence from Sudan in 2011 following 50 years of Africa's long-running civil war. Two years later, the country slid back into chaos after Kiel accused his longtime rival Machal of a coup attempt which resulted in the death of tens of thousands of people and the displacement of 2.4 million others. Machal dismissed the coup narrative as false and a way by President Kiel to silence the voices calling for democracy in the country. With the resolutions that were agreed on during the IGAD summit over the weekend, it is clear manifestation that even with the intervention of the international community, it is South Sudan, her government and her citizens that can come up with an everlasting solution to peace in the youngest African nation. Jeslina Chibule, Abubeka Selunigo, WBS-TV, Kololo.